Experts have come to the conclusion that crypto banks aren't that far away. There are many reasons, and one of them is probably the cost involved in traditional banking. We decided to have a look at why this is a fact for our immediate future and how it will impact society. Background The crypto industry's popularity may be seen in the stats. For example, the market capitalization of Bitcoin has surpassed $1 billion, and the market capitalization of blockchain is predicted to reach $23.3 billion. By 2026, the total market capitalization of cryptocurrencies is estimated to reach $7 billion. Crypto banks are continuing to grow as a result of these eye-catching stats, whereas the regular banking system is already facing severe setbacks. According to a public poll, 79% of Americans have heard of cryptocurrency, and a significant percentage of them have invested in it. Coinbase, one of the largest markets, has validated over 56 million users. To compare the website's engagement to that of Fidelity Investments, a traditional investment management firm, they have 35 million user accounts according to official data. Traditional banks are being surpassed by cryptocurrency banks. But what about traditional institutions? So what is crypto banking? Let's begin with the crypto aspect. Cryptocurrency, or crypto for short, is a digital form of money that is backed by computer code rather than a central bank like the Federal Reserve. There are about 9,000 different cryptocurrencies. Only a few, such as Bitcoin and Ethereum, have a large following. The word crypto banking is a novel one, and it can refer to a variety of things. Investing is the most common way for people to connect with cryptocurrencies. This may entail using a trading platform to buy and sell digital currency. Traditional banking, on the other hand, is concerned with the management of cash and credit at a bank, such as checking and savings accounts, as well as loans. Managing digital currency at a financial technology corporation or a financial services provider is referred to as crypto banking. Simply having a balance, making payments, and even collecting income using one or more cryptocurrencies are examples of these financial services. At least one bank has included cryptocurrency into its offerings. Cryptocurrency banking is a new and rapidly changing idea. Here's a closer look at some of the most important features. Getting started. To manage cryptocurrency, you must purchase it, and you'll need a crypto wallet to do it, which stores proof of your digital assets. Many organizations that allow you to acquire cryptocurrency can also store it for you in their free cryptocurrency wallets. Buying crypto can be simple if you use a crypto exchange like Coinbase or a financial technology company like PayPal. You pay in US dollars and receive the corresponding value in the digital currency you select. Then, just like a bank or investment account, you can see your balance. You may be able to transfer and receive crypto from others depending on the company. Carefully consider where you acquire cryptocurrency. Some organizations such as PayPal and SoFi do not allow you to withdraw cryptocurrency from their systems, forcing you to sell in order to use the money elsewhere. Cryptocurrency holders who want to use several platforms or Bitcoin ATMs for in-person transactions should look into crypto wallets that save their funds on software that is housed on their computer or portable device. These wallets let you conduct transactions without the requirement for a third party to confirm them. Firms that let you buy crypto Customers can buy, sell, and keep cryptocurrencies alongside any U.S. dollar balances at peer-to-peer -peer payment businesses like Square and PayPal. Revolut and SoFi, two banking technology companies, offer comparable services. PayPal also allows you to pay for online purchases with a cryptocurrency balance, which you then sell back to PayPal at the end of the transaction. These companies may be good places to start learning about crypto because they have established relationships with regular banking systems. However, keep an eye out for transaction fees and limitations. Square's Cash App for example, only allows you to buy Bitcoin, whereas PayPal and others allow you to buy three or more cryptocurrencies. Crypto banks compared to traditional banks On practically every forum where the financial market is addressed, terms like blockchain, AI, and cryptocurrencies are trending. This is a time when substantial changes are occurring, and the crypto industry is driving those changes, as the number of transactions is expanding on a daily basis rather than year to year. Financial experts predict that by 2024, the compound annual growth rate would be over 12%. This is when people began to question the role of tradition, as well as its future. While we have been using traditional currencies for decades, the widespread use of cryptocurrency will assist it to assume a greater role in our lives as a technology. Traditional banks face a number of challenges when compared to crypto banks, one of which is that transaction speeds are far slower than when completing crypto transactions. Challenges faced by traditional banks The use of cryptocurrencies transforms the transaction and investment process from what we've been used to in recent decades. The global financial crisis of 2008 demonstrated to the entire globe that the banking sector is susceptible to economic issues as well. When it became evident that those financial institutions would be unable to protect their funds, demand for other methods of securing funds skyrocketed. Satoshi Nakamoto created the first ever virtual asset, Bitcoin, at this time. The key benefit was that it eliminated the use of a regular banking payment system, often known as third 
party involvement from the process. Today, we can see that the price of one Bitcoin has changed dramatically since it reached its all-time high of $64,000. Furthermore, traditional banks have to pay their staff and its customers foot that bill by paying for transactions and other banking fees. With crypto banks, those fees will come down substantially. The bank that offers Bitcoin rewards. Unlike practically every other bank in the United States, Quantic Bank allows customers to purchase Bitcoin. The bank provided a Bitcoin rewards checking account in December 2020. Few banks offer rewards checking, and when they do, it's usually in the form of interest or cashback. When you use your debit card to make a purchase at Quantic, 1.5% of the transaction value in US dollars is converted into Bitcoin and maintained by a third-party company. There's no limit to how much money you can make. There are no monthly fees, and your funds are FDIC insured in dollars. The wonderful thing about checking Bitcoin rewards is that you aren't putting your own money at danger. So even if Bitcoin falls in value, you haven't lost anything, explains Quantic Bank CEO Stephen Schnall. You won't be able to utilize Bitcoin anywhere if you withdraw it. You must instead redeem it in dollars, which incurs a 2% tax. The account is available in 27 states and the District of Columbia. How is decentralized technology helping us? The traditional banking system's impediments for individuals were its own policies, rules, and most importantly, interest rates, which fostered insufficient processes for clients. The new crypto payment system was providing them with a service that no bank could supply. This is a customer-centric approach, and they are offered the option of holding assets anonymously. The decentralized banking process, which first came to Nakamoto's mind as a remedy to the convoluted financial system, was the answer. Of course, this new system comes with its own set of risks, but it also offers benefits that individuals cannot pass up. The Fed's New Digital Dollar The Federal Reserve has declared that the digital dollar will be implemented in summer 2021. This does not imply that the digital dollar will be a cryptocurrency nor that it will be decentralized or based on blockchain technology. It will be a digitized version of a typical fiat currency. The primary motivation behind the government's decision to create the digital dollar is to allow even the poorest Americans access to the financial system. This could also be an attempt to address the problem that the cryptocurrency industry has posed for existing banking institutions. Many other major financial market players such as MasterCard and Visa are attempting to work with central banks to develop a customer centric strategy and reform the outdated system. The Future of Crypto Banking More banks are anticipated to allow consumers to buy and trade cryptocurrencies in the near future, particularly through collaborations with third-party organizations. Vast Bank, based in Oklahoma, unveiled a service in February 2021 that allows clients to acquire and keep digital assets. And First Boulevard, a black-owned neobank, teamed with Visa to test a similar offering. Kasasa, a financial technology company, aims to offer Bitcoin wallets to its over 900 community banks and credit unions. Meanwhile, existing crypto platforms anticipate that crypto will revolutionize the way we bank. The initial wave of cryptocurrencies like Abra must close the gaps that currently require traditional banking. Bill Bardhit, creator and CEO of the crypto payments app Abra says, I still need to pay bills and conveniently shop online in dollars. What is your take on crypto banking? Do you think this is the future or simply a gimmick? That's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and comment below who would you like to see next. Also, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you're new to the channel to be notified when we upload more content. Thanks.